Amen. Everybody sitting so far back. Like we, it's all right. It's cool. I got the I fan. Got the fans. Call dibs on the fans. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God is good. God is good. Amen. Uh, let's get into some word this this evening. <clears throat> so, I have a question. I want to, I'd like to start off with a question. Uh, how do we say, how do we say yes to God and no to ourselves? These cameras is going to restrict me from moving. Yeah, because I'm already moving and I had to stop. Pop locking. Bam, bam for y'all. Amen. Hey, <laughs> praise God. Amen. <laughs> how do you say yes to God? And no to ourselves. Yes to God and no to ourselves. Yes or no, it was probably one of the first words that we learned as a kid, as a baby. Next to mommy and daddy, yes or no was probably right there, if not before mommy and daddy. Uh, so it's only natural that yes and no be such a big part of our everyday life. Like, you know, yes, I'm going to wake up when an alarm go off. I might hit the snooze button a couple times, but I am going to get up. Yes, I'm going to take carrots to work instead of cookies for my lunch. Uh, no, I'm not going to take this way because there's too much traffic. And no, I'm not going to stay late. As soon as 5 o'clock hit, I am out of here. I am done. Uh, we as Christians also find ourselves saying yes or no to God's. A lot of times, the no is a more prevalent response to God. And we'd be surprised on how many times in the course of a day we have an interaction with God and we either saying yes or we saying no. Uh, the big thing for me is, you know, a couple of things we're going to talk about. But as I was getting the lesson, it, it really touched me in such a way because I realized that after yes, there's an action that needs to be done. After you say yes, there's an action. So a lot of times we don't want to do the action that's connected to the yes. So because we don't want to do the action that's connected to the yes, we say, Lord, no. Or our actions say, Lord, no. You don't have to physically say no. You don't have to physically say yes. But your actions will dictate what you're saying to God. So if my actions saying no, I can't be upset when I don't receive what God has for me at the end of that thing. See, you got to understand, yes, activate something in the spiritual and in the natural. Let me, let me give you an example. And I'm already going into my stuff already, but it's all right. Let's get into this thing. Yes, act, activate things in the spiritual and the natural. For instance, in the natural. If, you, if, you, if you're on a job and they're asking you, and I just said about staying late, and they say, can you stay late? Can you come early? You say yes, and you do it. Can you stay late? Can you come early? They say yes, and you do it. You say yes, and you, and you do it. And again, stay late, come early. Hey, can I give you some extra work to do? Can you do this project? Yes, I will be happy to. What do you need me to do? What that does, it activates something. So when the promotion is available, who you think they're going to look at? See, for me being a business owner, when you say yes, when I ask you something, I'm already planning in my head, oh, this is someone I can depend on. This is someone I can look to. This is someone I can count on. So when promotion is ready, who you think going to get it? See, we're not getting promoted like we've been praying for because we won't say yes. We won't say yes. I don't want more work. I don't want to stay late. I don't want to come early. But we praying, Lord, elevate me. Lord, give me favor on my job. We want the favor without the work. We, we, want, we want the fruit without planting the seed. And then even if God does plant the seed, we don't want to, want to, we don't want to work. We don't want to till the ground. We don't want to water the plant. We just want God to do everything 
while we just sit around and look. And the, and that, that's what I was in the natural, about the, about the spiritual side. Yes does something. Because what you got to understand is God already has a blessing waiting for you. At the end of your yes. Yes is an action. Remember that. God already has something at the end of that thing. But a lot of times we miss out on this over here because we won't say yes right here. Now, yes, let me tell you. Yes, majority of the time is not going to be a pleasant. It's not going to be fun. If, if yes was always fun, then everybody would be saying yes. But yes, it's not fun. So because it's not fun and it doesn't look good, a lot of times we say no. In the Bible, we have examples of people saying yes. Yes, I will leave my family and, and follow you. We have people saying no. No, I won't go preach to Nineveh. You know, we have, we have people saying yes, yes, I will build this ark. We have people saying, no and complaining. I, I don't want no more manna. You going to eat this manna today? No, I'm not. You got to give me something else. So today I, I want to talk about yes. That's the title of the day. Yes. Because this right here, I pray that it helps you get to the next level in your spiritual walk and your natural walk. I like to, those two run hand in hand for, to me. You know, you can't just be super spiritual and, and no earthly good, and you can't just be in the natural all the time and have no spirituality. They run hand to hand. So when I say yes over here, I'm saying yes over here. Because God has a way of blessing me over here that trickles down and I get blessed on this side. When I say yes in the spiritual, God blesses me in the natural. And when I say yes in the natural, God blesses me in the spiritual. So today we're going to talk about yes. Three things we're going to talk about this evening is, the first thing is, why is it difficult to say yes? Why is it difficult to say yes? Number two is, why is, is it important to say yes? Why is it important to say yes? And number three is, how do I say yes? Because a lot of times we say, do this, but we don't show you how to do this. Amen? Y'all ready? So the first one is what? Uh, why is it difficult? Why is it difficult to say yes? And like I was saying before, because a lot of times we don't want to do what the yes is requiring, requiring us to do, requiring from us. If I say yes, then it's going to require me to do something. I might use some sleep. I might get be tired I might have to give of my my substance it's going to require something from me and a lot of times I don't want to do that a lot of times I don't want to uh, put myself in that situation because I don't really see the benefit of saying yes at that particular moment I don't see it's, it's hard to see the benefit in saying yes when you ask me to do more work at, at my job at your job What's the benefit? You know, you feel like I'm doing your work. And it's always your manager who say, hey, can you do this for me? Isn't that your job? That's what we always say. Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? So we are quick to say no. Why is it difficult to say yes? Other times is, I don't know if I can do it. We have a tendency of looking at our shortcomings and, and what we will consider our shortcomings and saying, I can't do what you asked me to do. I can't do what you're asking me to do because I'm not able to. Let's look, let's look at a couple people. Let's go to Exodus chapter 6, verse 30. Moses is always a good go-to person. We're going to talk about why is it difficult to say yes. 
Moses, I mean, not Moses, <laughs> Exodus chapter 6, verse 30. When you get it, say, I got it. And it reads, and Moses said before the Lord, behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall I, uh, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? God speaks to Moses and tells him to go talk to Pharaoh, tell him to let your people go. You're going to deliver the people, the children of Israel out of Egypt, need you to go. And first thing Moses does, one of the things Moses do is say, listen, I have a stuttering problem. I can't do it. We have a tendency to look at our shortcomings. Again, we call them shortcomings and say, I'm not able to do what you're calling me to do, God, because of this. Because of that, because, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm this, because of my nationality, because of, because of how much money. All these different things, all these different excuses we make up as if God didn't already know we had. But I don't even know. I want. I was gonna say problems, but I don't even want to call them problems because we think they're problems. But in God's eyes, they're not problems. Moses stuttering was not a problem to God. If it was a problem to God, He wouldn't have called him in the first place. But it wasn't a problem to God. It was a problem to Moses. It's the, the things that you're struggling with, the things why you won't say yes. It's not a problem to God. It's a problem to you. It's your, it's, it's, it's your, it's your, what they call, your hiccup. God ain't worried about your stuttering. God could care less if you stuttered. God didn't say, hey, Moses, I need you to go. Uh, I know you got a stuttering problem. So, you know, did God say, God, no. You have to realize that if God called you, then he's going to equip you. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's do that again. If God called you, that means he's already equipped you. Moses already had the goods. He just had to go. He just had to say yes. You already got the goods. You just have to say yes. How do you think you're going to get that promotion when everybody's saying you need a degree to get that promotion. Because God has already given you the goods. Your shortcoming, what you perceive as your shortcoming is I don't have a degree. And what God is saying is I can make the impossible possible. I just need you to say yes. The reason why I'm having them give you all this work to do is so you can put yourself in a position so when the position comes up, they're going to say, I'm going to use them because they already know how to do everything, but they don't have a degree. It don't matter. They already know how to do it all. But that comes after the yes and the action. One thing, and 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 and... I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because some, some of the things that I say go along with what I'm talking about at that moment. And I'll probably come back and, and talk about it again. But one thing when I was reading about Moses and I studied on Moses and, and we looked at, you know, him saying I have a stuttering problem. When I, when I go through Moses 120 years of living, that was 120 years, right? Yeah, yeah, 80. Then he had another 40 years in the wilderness. Yeah, 120 years. He was 12 years old, and he was in Egypt for another until he was 40. Yeah, 120 years of living. I just want to make sure I'm saying the right thing. I had to look at the bishops. Is that right? He gave me the, he gave me the nod. Okay. 120 years of living. God called Moses when he was 40. No, man. No, when he was 80. I'm sorry. When he was 80. He called Moses when he was 80. For the next 40 years, he's over the children of Israel. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you something here that God showed me that I never realized. You never hear them again ever talk about him stuttering. I'm going to let that marinate for a second. You never hear anywhere else in the Bible other than when he first acknowledged that he had a stuttering problem that they talked about him stuttering. When he parted the Red Sea, didn't hear nothing about them stuttering. When he prayed for manna from heaven, didn't hear nothing about him stuttering. 
when he got the Ten Commandments, didn't hear nothing about him stuttering. Never again is that ever addressed or brought up. You know why? Because after a while, you will forget you had a shortcoming yourself. When God begins to elevate you and take you to where you forget you ever had a you ever had an issue with yourself in the first place. You forget that I, I ever. Oh, I forgot I didn't have a degree because I'm all, I forgot I was this. I forgot I was that. I forgot. I forgot. I, I forgot. Never again do they ever talk about Moses stuttering. It did not stop the anointing of God on his life. It did not stop what God wanted him to do. It did not stop him from being blessed. It did not stop him from being a blessing. It did not stop him from praying. It did not stop him. And then we never hear about it again. The very thing that you think is stopping you from moving forward after a while, we won't even bear to hear about it again. We won't hear it again. Only reason you know that I couldn't read because I tell you I couldn't read. If I never told you I couldn't read, y'all wouldn't have known. Y'all wouldn't know now I couldn't read. I was reading at a sixth grade level, 19 years old. Y'all wouldn't have known that. Why? Because I said yes to God. And God began to teach me how to read. And then now, 20 years later, there's no history or no nothing about me not being able to read. If you just do what God is asking you to do, you're you going to forget about whatever problem you thought you had. God is going to use you and your little problem, your little shortcoming. And God is going to make you forget about that thing. How many want to forget? I want to forget. But you only can forget after you say yes. Because if you don't say yes, you can never be put in that position or that situation. You can never be elevated to forget. The only reason you remember now is because in the place you are, that's all you see. In the, in the place you are, that's all you see is your shortcoming. In the place you are, that's all you see is your, uh, 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 your bank account on empty. In the place you are, that's all you see is I'm sick. In the place you are, that's all you see is I'm depressed. But where God is taking you, you're going to forget that my bank account was zero at one point in time. Not only zero, but it was in the negative. A couple hundred dollars. But now it's in the positive of a couple thousand dollars. But that only happens after the yes. It's hard to say yes. Because we, we, we just want to look at, when we look in the mirror, we can find all faults and things. You know what's, a, what's amazing about, about us is we can encourage and inspire and motivate the next person ever so great. Oh, we got all the great words to say. We got all the right scriptures. We will pray you to the throne room of God, the heavens above, the moon, the stars, and the sun will spread apart, and Jesus himself will stick his hand down and lay his hand on a person. We can help somebody reach the throne. But when it comes to ourselves, we critique ourselves, we criticize ourselves. And that's because we know ourselves. See, we just know what they tell us, what somebody else tell us. But when it comes to us, we, since we know ourselves so much, so well, we know ourselves so well. I said, we know ourselves so well, we know ourselves better than God. That's what we're saying. When, when God says, I want you to go step out, we saying, God, I know myself better than you know me, so you don't really know what you're talking about. That's what we're saying. Can I be real with you? You might not say that with your voice, but you're saying it with your actions. God, you must don't know who you're talking to. You don't know me like I know me, so I can't do that. You don't know me like I know me, God. I know you created heavens and earth, you know. I understand all that, but you don't know me. 
So I, I, can't, I can't say yes to this. I can't say yes to ministry. I can't say yes to preaching. I can't say yes to teaching. I can't say yes to going to the hospitals, praying for somebody. Lord, you, you, just, you just don't know. You don't know me. Lord, you don't know the mistakes I just made. You don't know what I did. Moses killed somebody. That never came up again either. Lord, I just did X, Y, and Z last week. You can't use me this week. It starts with yes. Let's look at somebody else. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Say Lord. Yes. Say Lord. Yes. When you wake up in the morning, just say yes. Because we, we have a tendency to say, not your will, Lord, but my thy will be done. Until when we find out what his will is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I may be the only one. Sound like there's a couple of y'all out there. Let your will be done, Lord. Yeah. Not my will, Jesus. Your will. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. I feel them in the atmosphere. Go tell that person about me. Uh, 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 right now? Yeah, right now. That person right there. Go talk to him and tell him about me. Uh, you show that one right there? Yeah, but you just was praying down the house this morning saying, not your will, but my will. So just say yes, Lord. Even when there's nothing to say yes about, just be like, yes, Lord. You got to get yourself in the habit of just saying yes. I'm, I'm starting to get myself in the habit of just saying, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm just chilling. I'm laying tile. Yes, Lord. Do, 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 do. Yes, Lord. Putting down thin set and grouting. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Because let me tell you something. You can pray. You can fast. You can feel. You can cry. You can roll all on the floor. But if you don't say yes, you just put on a show. You just put on a show. And let me tell you something. That's not the show God want to watch. He just going to turn the station. You just putting on the show. If you ain't going to say yes, you just putting on the show. Because God going to say, okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Let me see what you're going to do. See, we, it, we, 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 we love to talk about what they say. We talk a good game. And I'm talking about myself, too. I talk a good game. Oh, Lord, with your will, what you say, I go. Blah, 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 bam. We could talk a good game. But when it's time to show and prove, are we going to say yes? Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's look at somebody else. Go to Judges. Chapter number six, down to verse 11. Is anybody with me this evening? Is anybody getting anything this morning, evening? I say morning. <laughs> it has been a long day. Judges chapter 6, starting at verse 11. Hey Amen. You got to say, I got it. Say, yes, Lord. I just want to get you in a habit. We're going to say that probably about 10, 20 more times before this is over. Because I, I, I got to get it in your spirit. I got to get it in your spirit. And, and what, what, I, what happens is, what I'm trying to do is get that thing to soak in your subconscious. So it just becomes automatic. See, there's some things we can do that's just automatic. You know, when, when you, you, just, you don't have to think about it. You just automatically do it. We want to get to the point where we just automatically, Lord, yes. It's just automatic. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you tell me to do is going to be a yes. Let's look at this. It says in 
chapter 6, verse 11, he says, And there was a, there came an angel of the Lord, and sent under an oak, which was in, was in Ophir, that pertained to Joash, the uh, Ab 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 Abizarite, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which uh, our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not, uh, have I not sent thee? And he said unto the Lord, O Lord, uh, where else shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. This is how we get down. He, 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 he say, Lord, what happened to all that stuff they said they did? Delivered to Egypt, part in the Red Sea, and all this stuff, and, and all that great things we hear about. He said, oh, I got something for you. you know, what it reminds me of when you, when you open your mouth too fast. And then, and then, and then and the guy said, you're going to be the one that saves them. And you're like, oh, uh, but, 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 but Lord, but, but hold on. You know I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, that's a, hey, he does the best thing he can come up with. God caught him off guard. Sometimes that's the best thing you can come up with. Lord, uh, you, you, you know I'm short. You're like, what? That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> what that got to do with anything? Uh, the, uh, the Lord, uh, you know I'm black. What? Huh? <laughs> what? I said you was going to send free and deliver. What? Yeah, what that got? That's all he had. He was over there hiding stuff, talking junk to the Lord. He was big and bad. Well, uh, oh, you're going to be the one that saves him. Oh, man, uh, I'm poor. <laughs> I'm poor. Like, I know, I know once he thought about it, he said, man, have you had those moments when you said something like, man, I really could have said something a little bit better than that. If I had another time, I could have probably came up with something a little bit better than that. Because what do delivering has to do with your financial situation? He said, I'm going to send you. What, 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 do you, what do you say? What do you say? He says, uh, he said, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. He didn't say that was going to pay off debt. <laughs> he didn't say you're going you gonna to pay somebody or something. He had nothing to do. But the first thing he could come up with is I'm poor. And I'm the least in my father's house. That's the best you can come up with, Gideon? I'm poor. But that's, that's, that's what we do. We say, Lord, I can't do it because I'm, I'm, I'm poor. How, how, can I, how can I do a ministry and I don't have no money to? How can I feed the homeless and I don't have money for my home. I'm poor. Again, we have a tendency to look at what we would consider our shortcomings. We always look at where we are instead of where God is trying to take us. I'm going to say that again. We always look at where we are instead of where God is trying to take us. And what, 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 what I love about both of these guys is that they both was called to do a work that they didn't really know how to do. They both was in different timelines. They both seen different problems that they had that they thought should have prevented them for from doing what God is calling them to do. One guy say I stutter, the other guy say I'm poor. And I'm the least. Not only am I poor, I'm the poorest of the poorest. But God still used them. And and I, I love the people that God uses because it makes me feel good. I'm like, well I don't stutter. Okay. 
I ain't poor. Got a little money. I ain't got a lot, but okay, I'm okay. If you use them, Lord, you can use me. That's just how I look at it. Maybe I'm the only one. I just say, Lord, if you can use them, if they can say yes, then why can I say yes? If they can say yes, then why can I say yes? And yeah, it took some persuasion, persuading on God's part. Gideon say, hey, Lord, I, I need to make sure you, this is me, this is you. But at, when it was all said and done, they both said yes. And because they said yes, they became great. Now Gideon is just not somebody that was just hiding wheat. He actually someone that helped lead and, and bring, uh, 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 defeat the enemy. Moses got the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery. It set up all the other pieces for everybody else to come. What if they, what if they would have said, what if Moses would have said no? Where would Joshua? Would Joshua have defeated Jericho? What about David? Would David even have had a fight with Goliath? Would he ever would, would he would he ever would have been a king king? Yo, yes. Don't just stop with your blessing. And again, I'm stepping ahead of myself, but I, I, I like to insert this right here because yo, yes, is not just for you. Yo, yes, has miracles attached to it. Yo, yes, have deliverance attached to it. Yo, yes, has healing attached to it. Not for you, for somebody else. Who's going to get delivered because you said yes? Who's going to get healed because you said yes? Who's going to get the breakthrough they've been looking for because you said yes? Mm. Glory to God. Why is it difficult to say yes? Because we, we look at shortcomings that's not really shortcomings. We look, at our, we look at our faults that's not really faults. Because I'm pretty sure everybody can say all the faults they have. And if we was to compare notes to who faults was better than somebody else's faults, who faults was worse, we all see that, man, you, you, man, you probably you just, man, maybe I ain't as bad as I thought I was. I was reading something, I seen something the, the, uh, the yesterday, a nine-year-old girl was born without hands. And she, won, and she won a writing contest. Born without hands and she won a writing contest. She didn't let the fact that she didn't have hands stop her. She didn't say, well, I can't write because I don't have any hands. She said, whatever I have, I'm going to use. Yeah, it probably was a little bit harder for her than it is for most, than it is for some. Yeah, it probably took more time. Yeah, it probably took more energy. But at the end of the day, she ended up being victorious. Amen. Amen. At the end of the day, you're going to be victorious. If you step out and say yes now. Because this is the thing about, this is the thing about Yes. It, it always, it's going to come back around. It's going to come back around. I mean, just because you run don't mean your, the purpose of your life is going is gonna, to is gonna, is gonna dissipate. Just because you ran, trust me, I done ran. I done ran to Michigan. I done ran some everywhere. And I'm still called. You can run wherever you want to go, but you still call. Let me let me <laughs> let me tell you something about being called, about being called and anointed. People will know who you are even when you're not trying to show who you are. 
I remember when I was doing my club stuff. I was doing the club life. I left the church. I was doing my club thing. Big club promoter. I'm in the club. I'm on the microphone. I'm cursing. All types of stuff. Trying to hype the crowd up. And someone said, tell that preacher boy to get off the microphone. (laughs) I said, what was that? (laughs) And I remember, I was like, I don't even want to go say nothing no more. I don't even want to get on a mic no more. When you anointed, it don't matter where you are. You still anointed. You still anointed. It's going to follow you. It's going to follow you. So you might as well just say yes now. Save yourself the, 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 the embarrassment. Yeah, for sure. Definitely embarrassed. I'm thinking I'm up there jamming. Yeah, what's up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Tell that preacher boy, get off the mic. Save yourself the embarrassment, y'all. Just say yes. Just say yes. Let's, let's keep going. So that was why is it difficult to say yes. Number two, and we kind of touched on it already, but we're going to touch on it again some more. Why is it important to say yes? Um, I was saying that... Um, your miracles and your deliverance is attached to your yes. It's attached to your yes. Let's, and, and, and the miracles with someone else is attached to your yes. Go to, go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Starting at verse number 14. Genesis chapter 6, starting at verse number 14. Is everybody with me? Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I didn't mean to say that after I said, is everybody with me? <laughs> I was like, that's not what I meant. Y'all know what I mean, though. <laughs> we say yes to you, Lord. Not yes to me, Lord. No, no. Where we at? Genesis 6, chapter 14. I mean, chapter 6, verse 14. Let's go. It says, make thee an ark of gopher wood, room uh, shall thou make an ark, and shall pitch it within uh, and without the pitch. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go back. Let's start at nine. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth, was, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is coming before me, for the earth is full of violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood room, so thou make an ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pinch. Jump down to 22. And it says, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah said yes. Now, we, we, we know this story. This is a very common, uh, common story that's, that's taught. But what I want you to understand is sometimes you don't know what your yes is going to do. You don't know the impact your yes is going to have. God show you a glimpse and then begin to break down things. This is what I need you to do. And what I love about God is he, he already knew what he wanted to accomplish. And he told Noah how to do it. All he had to do is just follow the instructions. See, a lot of times I think when we when we, we afraid to say yes because we, we think we got to figure it out on our own. See, the importance of saying yes is God already has it figured out. All we have to do is follow his plans. It's like a blueprint. God says, listen, just say, yes, I got the blueprint. You just got to follow the blueprint. Why is it important to say yes? Because God has the blueprint. So you are not trying to do something on your own. You're not over here trying to finagle and make something. What I like about Noah is it made me want to Build something. And what do I mean by that is Noah made 
Nor was the Steve Jobs. Jobs, what's his name? Jobs. He made the iPhone, but it was a arc. He was doing something nobody else had done. He created something nobody else has done. There should be more Christians leading the forefront at creating and inventing new things. But we can't create and invent new things because we won't say yes. Why is it important to say yes? Because you could be a next inventor of whatever. Yes, again, Yes, and then there's action. When we say yes, it activates something. It sets things in motion. So we say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do this. So yes, and, and in the natural, yes, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to finish it. Yes, I'm going to start this business. Yes, I'm going to work this job. Yes, I'm going to do. Yes, yes, yes. That begins to set things in motion. So because you say yes here, your blessing tomorrow is waiting for you. Or because you say yes today. A lot of times we miss out on our blessing for tomorrow because we didn't say yes today. So now our blessing is waiting for us to get up, to catch up to it, but we just won't say yes. As soon as we say yes, the blessing be like, yo, I've been here all this time. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting on you. Yo, yesterday is for your blessing tomorrow. He saved his sons. He saved some animals. And everybody laughed at him. People will laugh at you because you say yes. We, we, we just have to, we have to be cool with that. I have to be cool with not being in the in crowd. We want to be in the in crowd so bad, especially in this social media age. We want to be the one. But it's all right not to be in the in crowd. I'd rather have a say yes to Jesus and be with God than be with a million, zillion people on this planet. As long as I got Jesus, I don't really need nobody else. It's important to say yes because it is... It's, it's, the same things in motion, it's opening up the doors. It's, it just does so much for us. And all the, all the fear, all the anxiety, all the, you know, the I can't do this and all those things that's running through your head, you just got to put them to the side and say, you know what? God has made a way for me to get through this thing. God is going to do what God does best. God has never leave me from north. Now you can go ahead and use those, God never leave me, no forsake me. God said, great is he. You know, you can start throwing those things out to yourself. So you could line up with God. So you can do what God is calling you to do. So you can be a blessing to yourself and to others. He saved lives because he said yes. How many lives are you going to save because you say yes? How many people are going to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost because you say yes? But we don't think about that. We always just think about us. We, we, we think about us. We think about us being uncomfortable. Like how, how hard was it for him to say, okay, I have to build a giant boat, but don't nobody know what a boat is. Just like they said, I have to, I'm going to make a phone that you can touch and see people on and go on the internet on when nobody else had that. I remember the phones, the rotary phones. Take you forever to call somebody. <laughs> Thank God 911 is nine. One, you know, 11 is right there. Somebody break in, they're going to get you because you take too long to call. Hold on, Mr. Thief. Let me just, none. Now we have phones all because someone said yes. He said yes to not be afraid to jump out there and be different. 
You can't be afraid to jump out there and be different in the spiritual and in the natural. You talking about you want to start the business, but you won't say yes and start it. But you talk about it real good. You got the vision. God says, as they went, signs and wonders follow. I'm going to say it again. As they went, signs and wonders follow. As they said yes, signs and wonders follow. You want your signs and wonders? Say yes and go. Say yes and go. Step out. Try God. Try him. I'm telling you, try him. And see not, won't he do what he said he's going to do. Step out and try God. Say yes. Be different. I don't know what's, what is, what's, what's up with us as, as, as Christians. Is we don't want to be different. We want to adapt everything the world does. And it should be the other way around. The world should be doing everything that we do. But they quick to say yes. Yes, I'm going to drink tonight. Yes, I'm going to smoke. Yes, I'm going to yes. Yeah, they yesing all the time. I don't think they ever say no. <laughs> Can I get one more drink? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Give me some more. You're already a little toe back. I don't know. I don't care. Yes, give me three more. They always saying yes. We need to be saying, we need to say yes like that. This free, yes, yes, yes. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes Lord. yes, Lord. Setting things, and why is it important to say yes? Because it's going to set things in motion for you. I like the fact that... Uh, one thing we see about Noah, he didn't question God. Moses did, Gideon did, some other folks. But Noah was like, okay, Lord, the, 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 the earth is pretty wicked. It is pretty bad. You going you gonna to make it rain and you want me to build this thing that nobody ever built or seen? Or well, I'm going to go ahead and do this thing. I want, I want something new. You know, you know, I want something. I want some, And you got to be careful of what you ask for. You know, you got to be careful. You got to be careful because sometimes we, we, we put ourselves in yes situations. And, and next thing you know, you know, we getting something happens and we like, oh, man, do I really want this? Like, for instance, I, I, I've been praying. I pray every day at work. And I say, Lord, I want to be the best towel installer out there. In the, you know, I want to be the best. You know, yes, I'm going to come to work on time. Yes, I'm going to work hard. Yes, 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 yes. But, man, every job something going wrong. Man, it seems like I can't catch a break. And the other day I was frustrated. I was like, Lord, what, what, what's, what's popping? Man? What's going on? Like, he said, well, what did you tell me? I said, well, I said I want to be a best towel guy, but this ain't the best towel guy. I'm, I'm losing money, making a bunch of mistakes. He said, I know. That's part of the process. In order for you to get better, you're going to have to make some mistakes so you know what not to do next time. I said, Lord, but it's costing me money. He said, okay. What, what does that mean? So I was like, oh, okay, after that, you know, what, what, what else can you say? That was, that was my last comeback. I lost, you know, I lost, lost money. I ain't had nothing after that. It's just like Gideon. I'm poor. You know what I'm saying? That's all I had. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I had. But what I realized is that me saying, yes, I want to go to the next level. God saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to take you there. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He, he didn't say, that, no, oh yeah, you're going to build this thing in three weeks. Year one go by, he's still building. Year two, year three, 10, 20, he's still building. Probably putting the stuff in the wrong place. Oh, man, that ain't supposed to go right there. We got to take that back out and put a new piece in. You saying yes, it, it, it's, it's going to come with 
some some hard times. And this is the thing. When you when you now that I look at it, now I'm cool. Now I went through my whining phase. You know what I'm saying? That's what I got to call it. I was whining. Now that I look back on it, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, I lost some money. Uh, money comes, money goes. But I did learn something. And what I realized is now that I'm through it, that, ah oh, man, I'm good. I'm ready for the next one. But now I, I, I have gained knowledge in not only the area of laying tile and what not to do, but also in myself, in my spiritual. Because now I realize that, you know, no matter what the situation is, I still have to walk with my head high. I still have to walk victorious. I still have to walk, you know, uh, trusting and believing in God. I can't feel frustrated and, and down and depressed for no circumstances. I learned all that because of some towel. There's multiple blessings waiting for you in your yes. I thought it was just going to make me a better towel guy so I can make more money. But actually what it's doing is make me a better man. It's making me a better man of God. It's making me a better husband, a better father. Because it's teaching me something outside of just laying tile. It's teaching me that no matter what, God is always going to see me through. And a lot of times it's just me being careless and not being diligent and not paying attention. So now I'm not only do I pay attention to that, I'm going to pay attention over here. Not only am I going to be diligent here, I'm going to be diligent there. I said the spiritual and the natural, they run hand in hand. So all that because I say, I want to do this. God is going to open up some things for you because you say yes. God is going to release some things to you because you say yes. And there's going to be some other things attached to it that you didn't even realize you was going to get in the package. You're going to get blessed this way. You're going to get blessed that way. God is going to touch you over here. God is going to touch you over there. And when I say blessed, it's not always material things. But sometimes just having a peace of mind and having joy, that's a blessing. Just to be able to walk around and be excited for another day, just to wake up and be happy just to be alive, that's a blessing. But that comes when you say yes. And it comes out of something that you wouldn't even think. I didn't know that saying yes to that was going to make me wiser. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the last one here. How do, you, how do I say yes? Go with me to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 36. Yes. What did I say? Matthew 26 and 36. We're going to read to 36 to 46. How do I say yes. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A lot of times it's a lot easier said than done to say yes. See, a lot, see, you know, we come to church and we get hype. Like, we get hype. We be ready to take on the world after, well, you should after service. You should be ready to go out and, you know, lay hands, you know, all, you know, but then when, when, when Monday hit, you know, after the, the, the excitement wore off, you know, when Tuesday hit, that's why Wednesday is good. It's like that recharge. Let me, let, me get, let me get ready for the rest of the week. See, it's, it's, I can sit here and say, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to say yes. And then when it's time to say yes. Are you going to say yes? So all these things play a factor. Everything that I'm talking about play a factor into getting you prepared to 
always say yes. You know, understand why you don't say yes. Understand why it's important to say yes. And then we're going to talk about how do I say yes. It's all it's packaged together so you can take this back home and say, okay, this is what I need to do in order to get my yes going. Because I just don't want to be hyped just for tomorrow. I don't want to be hyped just, on, just for Thursday. Rest of tonight and, you know, summer Thursday. And then when Friday come, I'm back to my old normal no self. But the only way for you to stay hyped continually is continually digging in this thing. Continually meditating on this word. Continually staying focused, keeping your eyes on the prize. Continue saying, yes, Lord. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, next week, a month from now, a year from now, you're still saying yes. I don't want this to just to be a one night. I'm yesing it tonight. Like everybody going to go home tonight and say yes. Everybody, everybody saying yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Can I borrow five dollars? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, you ain't never gave me no money. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm hype. Yes. But when the hype is over, when the drilling is gone, can you still say yes? And this is how you still say yes. Matthew 26, 36 is in. Then come with Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. And said to the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is seeing me sorrowful, even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them sleep. And he said unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And, it came, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to the disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. You want to say yes? You want to know how to say yes? It starts with prayer. It starts with prayer. Look, look at this. Jesus is getting ready to bring salvation to all of us. And I often wonder about this and say, you know, it's Jesus. Why was Jesus praying anyway? But then what I realize is that the humanity of Jesus was, was experienced something that the godness of Jesus never experienced. The humanity of Jesus was tired. God, was, God is never tired. The humanity of Jesus, you know, may have kicked his foot on something, may have hurt itself. The humanity of Jesus felt the sun. It was hot. He was sweaty. The humanity of Jesus experienced something that the God, Heavenly Father, never had to experience. He just created it. But in his humanity, he was like, yo, this is real. I'm about to be inflicted and experience some pain that's real. Even though he was God manifested in the flesh. He said, man, I remember when I was walking and my leg cramped up and, you know, that hurt it real bad. And I had to sit down for a second and kind of kick that thing out. You know, I, 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 but what, what's, what's getting ready to happen? 
He said he came to Gethsemane and he, he took some people with him. You can't take everybody with you. Some things everybody can't go and pray with you on. You can't call everybody to pray with you. Some things it's going to take just you and maybe a handful of folks, some, some real folks that's going to really reach the throne. He thought they was going to reach the throne, but they, hey, but still, you can't take everybody with you. And sometimes it's just you. Because when it's all said and done, it's really just Jesus. Because they were asleep. Sometimes your yes is attached to some, your yes is attached to you praying and reaching the throne. And so you can put your flesh under subjection. Because even though I'm saying yes, 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 I still don't want to do it. I still, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, but I know God is calling me to do it. But I don't want to do it, but I want to do what God is telling me to do. But I don't want to do it, so how do I do it when I don't want to do it? I have to pray myself through this thing. And some people can't pray you do that thing. Some people can't speak a word into your life that's going to help you and push you to the next level. So I got to do this thing on my own. Sometimes it's going to be you and God. I'm going to take a couple people with me. He still didn't take everybody. He still, he still only took a couple folks with him. But it still ended up just being him. So what happens? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. He said, my soul is a seeming sorrowful even to death. Tarry here and watch with me. Pray with me. Tarry here with me. Intercede for me. Some people that you have right there with you, you, you think they're praying for you? They're really not praying for you. They're really not praying for you. For me, when it, when it, says, you, when it says you sleep, that, to me, you're praying against me. If you ain't praying for me, you're praying against me. If I got you there, I want you to pray for me, and you're sleeping. And so he goes, he goes, he has a dialogue. He says, I went a little further, and he began to pray. He said, oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. If you can, Lord, take this away. Is there any other way that I, this, could, this could happen? Is there any other way salvation can be brought? He already knew what it was for. Is there any other way that, you know, I can get this promotion without me really having to do? Is there any other way I can do this ministry without me really having to? Is there any other way I can, you know, get this healing without me having to, you know, He said, nevertheless, not thy will, but thy will. Let it be, if, if, even if, if, if it can't, then it's your will. What, what, what he was doing, he was, he was hyping himself up. He was, he, was, he, was, he, was talking, he was talking faith into his life. He was saying, listen, if, you, if this cup can't pass, then I'm going to do what you tell me to do, Lord. He was, still in, he was still in battle with his flesh. He was still in battle with his flesh because his flesh was still saying no, but he was trying to tell his flesh, I want you to line up with what God is saying. Sometimes you're going to be in battle with your flesh and you got to get your flesh to line up with what God is saying. So you got to say, Lord, I'm going to do it. But what happens? What happens? What happens? And he cometh and he finds the disciples asleep and he goes back. Why did he go back and pray again? Because his flesh hadn't got the message yet. Sometimes when you pray one time, your flesh ain't got the message yet, so you got to go back again. Go back for a second of time. I need you to line up with God. He said, Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, then thou will be. So now he's saying, listen, he's not even saying take the cup away. He's saying, listen, I understand that it ain't going to pass. That will be done. But what is he doing? Again, he's going against his flesh. His flesh is still trying to fight back and say, no, we ain't doing this. He's saying, listen, flesh, you got to line up with what God is saying we got to do. He said, no, we ain't doing this. He said, listen, Lord, if it's your will, I know it ain't going to pass, then let's do it. Then he go back out again. See the disciples sleeping again. Y'all, these guys just won't. Y'all know what's going on here? He goes back and pray again for a third time. Sometimes we pray one time and that's it. 
Sometimes we pray two times and that's it. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus went back three times to pray so he could get his flesh under subjection. And we pray one time and think we're going to stop our flesh from acting a fool. One prayer on Tuesday is going to get our flesh under subjection. We give up on the first prayer and say prayer don't work. I thought you was going to heal me, God, but I prayed and I didn't get healed, so prayer must not work. This is Jesus had to go back three times. He didn't heal the blind man, or raise somebody from the dead. Hey, this is Jesus we're talking about, and he had to pray three times. We ain't no close to Jesus. And we want to pray one time, and that's it. We want to say, oh, Lord. I don't know who this is. I don't know who this is for, but go back and pray some more. 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 It was three times in the third time he came out and said, I'm good. And in Luke, it talks, it says an angel come, came and strengthened him. See, you ain't prayed long enough to be strengthened. Just because you had a good feeling don't mean you've been strengthened. You need to stay there until you get strengthened. And you're going to understand what's the difference between a good feeling and being strengthened. You're going to feel it. Because when you come out of that thing, you're going to say, yes, Lord, I'll go. A good feeling would just have you jumping and excited for a second, but it's, you still can say no. But when you strengthen, you say, Lord, now I'm ready. Whatever it is, I'm ready. Whatever you're calling me to do, guess what? I'm ready. Whatever lies ahead of me, I'm ready. If they beat me, I'm ready. If they slap me, I'm ready. If they lie on me, I'm rely on me, I'm ready. If they put me on the cross, guess what? I'm ready. They pierce me in the side, guess what? I'm ready. They put thorns on my head, guess what? I'm ready. Prayer is only going, that's the only way you're going to get to that yes. Prayer. Real prayer. Ain't no fake prayer. All prayer is real, but I, I'm, I'm saying uh, continual. Continuously in prayer. It just can't be a one-time thing. Continually, continuous in prayer. I'm going to continue. I'm going to stay in prayer, Lord, so I can say yes. And I can follow you all. After that, after he prayed three times, there was another, another doubt. Jesus went from there to the cross, to the grave, to taking the keys of death, to ascending up in heaven, to sending back the Holy Ghost. God is getting ready to do something great in your life. But you have to say yes. But the only way you're going to say yes and really apply the action to that yes is you really get in that prayer. You really get in that closet. You really tarry. They said Jesus prayed so hard it was like blood. It, said it, was, like, it was like drops of blood. He prayed. He travailed so hard. We would get down and say, Lord, this, 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 and we done. We ain't travailed. We ain't nothing. We ain't broke a sweat. We ain't did nothing. We ain't reached. We ain't tapped into nothing. He said, this is, again, this is Jesus, y'all. This is not some regular Joe Blow. This is not one of the disciples. This is Jesus. This is God manifested the flesh. He said he prayed so hard that it was like drops of blood. This is Jesus. 
if Jesus, and Jesus said, I am setting the example. So if that's the example, then Lord, I need to get down and to go again a little bit harder. I need to pray a little bit harder. He said, some things you just got to just press in. Any other time we see Jesus pray, it's just, a, it's just prayer. He told him, how do I pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, will be done. Or if there's in heaven, give us a day our daily prayer. He said, that's how you pray. But when it's time to really go down and go in, let me show you how you get down. You think that was just, they just stuck that in there just to stick that? No, he said an example. Listen, some things you're just going to have to travail and you're going to have to stay there until you get your deliverance. You're going to have to stay there until you get your victory. you going to have to get back up, go check. And say, no, I ain't ready yet. Let me get back down again. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, somebody say yes, Lord. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Somebody say yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bless his name. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Come on and bless him. Come on and praise him. Say yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless, we bless you, God. We magnify your name. We thank you for your word. I will say yes. I will say yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a hand praise for his word. It is offering time.